Hey everybody, welcome to the 1947 Rise podcast. A podcast that helps India-born, US-trained Indians get integrated into the Indian technology ecosystem and inspires them to move back to India to build massive tech companies and or help enable the tech ecosystem. We do this by interviewing India-born, US-trained Indians who have moved back to India and built massive tech companies themselves and or helped enable the tech ecosystem. I'm excited to have Arjun Vedya with me on the podcast today. Arjun is a D2C founder and investor. He built Dr. Vedya's to India's largest Ayurveda brand online. Dr. Vedya's brand was recently acquired by RP Sanjeev Goenka Group, making it one of India's first D2C exits. He now leads venture investing for World Invest in India, and he's also an active angel investor and mentor to brands in India's startup ecosystem. Arjun, welcome to the show. Thank you so much Shivam. Glad to finally be on the show. I think we've been talking about it for a while, so thank you for inviting me and I'm really excited for this conversation. I'm super pumped and let's get going. So let's start by you walking us through your journey of growing up in India, then moving to the US and then moving back to India. What made you move back to India? So look, I think Shivar start uh, very early on maybe even before I was born with my family's legacy uh, because that had a lot to do with what I ended up doing. So Vedya my last name means Ayurvedic doctor. I come from a legacy of 100 50 years of ayurveda in my family right? so my grandfather great grandfather and generations before all ayurvedic doctors and so we have a large ip of formulations passed down from generation to generation in our family um and you know the legacy of what i ended up doing was actually not a business unlike what a lot of people think dr vedya's was an ayurvedic clinic that my grandfather inherited from his father and ran and my grandfather was probably one of india's most successful ayurvedic doctors he had 300 to 350 patients on a daily basis walking into his clinic he had 12000 patients on a monthly basis trying to via post and when my dad graduated from college in the late 80s he wanted to do what my grandfather was doing in his clinic but at a much larger scale so take my grandfather's products and formulations to millions of consumers across the country and so build a brand out of my grandfather's clinic um I think doctors and businessmen find it hard to see eye to eye and so eventually my grandfather said hey I have 300 people walking in on a daily basis to this clinic what is the need for marketing for me just it, it makes no sense right I don't need to do any marketing because I have so many people who trust me and so eventually my dad went his own way and started what is now our family business in the jewelry and watch space but look I was born with juvenile bronchitis I suffered from asthma at age 2 I grew up with pumps nebulizers inhalers steroids um i was the only kid playing golf and squash at age 5 while all my friends were playing cricket and football because there was too much dust on the cricket and football fields in bombay and i'm a huge cricket fan right so it sucked for me to go to the golf course and you can imagine a 5 year old 6 year old kid trying to hit a golf ball how difficult that is and and that frustrated me right so i think Uh, I was the only kid who wasn't allowed to have Coke, Fanta, Limka, or Sprite at a birthday party. Um, I had ice cream for the first time when I was 13 years old. I remember going to Baskin Robbins on a Sunday night, and uh, my mom waited till the vanilla ice cream melted to let me have that ice cream soup. Right, so really, for me, asthma was a limiting factor, and it didn't allow me to have what you what you may call a normal childhood. And so I got into Ayurvedic treatment very early on. I got into my grandfather's treatment very early on, and 14 years later, I stopped having the pump. I stopped having the inhaler, and I was cured of asthma. And what's the first thing I went went out to do? Right, I, I started playing cricket again. I was in an IB school in Bombay, and uh, look, it wasn't a great cricket team. We convinced one of the British history teachers to be our coach. There were about 15, 17 of us who wanted to play cricket. only a few of us showed up to every single practice and so i was made captain not because i was the best player i was far from the most talented uh, but i was the most regular and i was the most disciplined and that's something i learned from my grandfather so i showed up to every practice and so i was made captain of the school cricket team and for most people it wouldn't have been a big deal because literally like i mean 
<laughs> there was no one who showed as much enthusiasm as me but for me that was like a big moment right because it seemed to me like ayurveda had allowed me to get past this challenge of asthma and get back to doing what i loved and, and play cricket right and so that's when ayurveda started meaning more to me than just family legacy it meant something very special to me um as you know i went to the us in 2009 for my undergrad i went to brown university and there i saw the move towards natural organic products i went to whole foods and i saw all of this stuff which i had never seen in india before but i also saw yoga being repackaged shiva i saw yoga mats yoga gyms yoga apparel lulu lemon it's a multi billion dollar industry in the us and i i remember calling my grandfather from campus saying hey uh this is amazing that yoga is now so large and so big globally but it also sucks that indian companies have nothing to do with it and yeah that was the the mindset behind which i moved back to india i moved back to india in 2013 for me actually i'm super patriotic and so i believe that actually we are the few who have the experience to study abroad get the exposure etc so it's our job to come and give back in whatever way to the indian economy right and so i i mean look i i didn't take up a service role in some sense i i worked in private equity Um, I had a fund called Elkaritin. That was my first job out of college, but that's the reason I moved back to India in 2013. And yeah, I'm happy to get into my first job and then Dr. Vedya's. But that's a little bit on my background and my journey to coming back to India. Yeah, no, uh, and and it seems like as you said, like you know, we could get exposure by uh, spending time in US, and 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 in your case, you were able to connect the dots, right? And you moved back and and tried repackaging uh, Dr. Vedya. So with that, let's uh, let's let's get into the origins of uh, Dr. Vedya and uh, and and yeah, let's uh, let's let's start from there. So look, I think the origins of the the legacy you already know about. I talked about mm-hmm. it, right? It's my family legacy. On the brand specifically, look, there were some macro factors and micro factors that eventually got me to doing what I did, right? The macro factors were look. Um, When I moved back to India in 2013, the government changed in 2014. The Ministry of Ayush was created, and there was interest and excitement towards Ayurveda like I'd never seen before. Customers like you, Shiva, were asking people like me about Ayurveda, which had never happened in my life. Also, there was this thing called e-commerce, right? So I was the youngest member of the team, and El Capital, and so my boss said, "Hey, why don't you go and study this thing called e-commerce?" And in my first few weeks of work, I actually got to evaluate a company called Mintra, right? And My boss asked me a question at that time. She said, "Hey, you think Indians will buy clothes online?" And I was like, "I'm not sure." And and look where we are today, right? So I realized very quickly that like studying e-commerce, spending time with companies like Zivame, Pepperfly, Bluestone, Mintra, Jabong, etc. This was not a fad; it was here to stay, right? So that was the second thing. And the third thing was with the Patanjali revolution happening, right? Hundreds of thousands of consumers like you had become interested in Ayurveda like never before. right so government changed ministry of ayush was created this thing called e-commerce was here to stay and people like you were interested in ayurveda that was the macro from the micro standpoint actually unfortunately my grandfather passed right and so we had this rich legacy these formulations my father had obviously not joined that part of the business or not taken forward that legacy and so i remember promising my grandfather at some point that look i'll take this forward and do something with your legacy um and so after he passed i just felt at 24 years old like i had nothing to lose and it was my duty to give back or or do something with it and so yeah i quit my job in 2016 and by october 2016 launched this brand called dr vedya's with the idea that i wanted to take 150 years of our family legacy and 5000 years of ayurvedic science and repackage and rebrand to appeal to modern consumers so that was the origin of this brand called dr vedya's we started with two products one's called live it up um it's the it's it's a ayurvedic hangover shield that that actually was a long term liver protector i repackaged as a hangover shield obviously as a 24 year old it was great fun to market that product um and the second one is called herbo fit it was a goodness of chavan prash in a capsule so took the bitterness stickiness and inconvenience away from chavan prash and multivitaminized the formulation so that's the two we launched with when we started in october 2016 so that's the two we launched with um in october 2016 and like most um brands at that time the term d2c didn't exist and online only brands didn't exist and so we went off on the journey that most brands were going off on 
which was uh, go offline, right? And so I had a big launch event at Taj Lands and Hotel in Mumbai in October 2016. I signed up six distributors. There was a lot of press fanfare at the event. And so when we went ahead and launched the brand, uh, we thought that like, this is amazing, right? Because we signed up six distributors in Bombay. We had 22 sales reps on field. I remember in Jan 2017 doing 10 lakh rupees of billing and the private equity analyst in me started modeling this on an Excel sheet, right? So 10 lakhs, 20 lakhs, 50 lakhs, 1 crore, 5 crores and very quickly it became a million dollar a month business on that Excel sheet. Reality was, Shiva, that if you... When you build to an offline distributor, that distributor has to build to a retailer who has to build to Shiva and only once Shiva buys the product from the shop do I get paid. And I was entering a very competitive industry, right? There was Dabar, Imami, Patanjali, Zandu, Himalaya. For that industry, I had no right to win. I had no muscle or money. I had no budgets for ATL advertising and I didn't know offline business or offline FMCG business. And so three months later, I got... 9 lakhs worth of this 10 lakhs of product back and it was a colossal failure for me in life, right? Like I'd gone to a good school, got, got into a good college, went to an Ivy League college, got a great job out of college in private equity and so it was a huge failure for me. But fortunately for me, I got time to reflect really early on. I spent time thinking why we lost, right? And, and it was clear we didn't have the muscle, we didn't have the right to win, we didn't have the resources and so... It wasn't going to happen offline for us against these large brands, right? And my wife, who was my girlfriend at the time, she was in the early team at Nike after working at Goldman in the UK. She had moved back to India. And she said, look, you've seen this e-commerce thing happen. I've seen it happen. It's here to stay. And there's no one doing it in Ayurveda. So that's where the opportunity lies. So I convinced her to come on board and build this e-commerce pivot with me. We got engaged and then... Post us getting engaged, she joined the business in June 2017. Um, against both of our family's wishes, actually, they said, like, look, you guys are getting married. Building a business together is the worst idea in the world. But I think for us, it was it just seemed like the right thing to do, complementary skill sets. And um, both people with the same aligned interests and incentives. And so we went ahead and launched drvedias.com in November 2017. We were doing one order every three days at that time. And for the first year, we just learned online business. Right? We learned marketing, Facebook, Google, Shopify, WooCommerce, talking to customers, ops, logistics, all of those things. And we reached 50 orders a day. And Shiva, today, if you talk to a brand who's doing 50 orders a day, it's not a big deal, right? But try to take yourself back to November 2018. Single branded Ayurvedic website. D2C is barely a term. 50 orders a day was a pretty big deal. And so from there, as founders, we said, okay, now we've hit product market fit. And now this is a business. This is not just something in our heads, right? This can be really scalable. And so when we hit 50 orders a day, we said, okay, now at this structure where it's an average order value of some 650, 700 rupees, customer acquisition cost of 30%, this is a hyper scalable business. And we can really, really, really grow from here. And the rest is history, Shiva. We, over the next Two years scaled from 50 to 5,000 orders a day, launched another about 60 products, um, scaled to 16,500 pin codes in India, 2 million plus transacting customers, raised a Series A from RP Sanjeev Goenka Group in mid-2019 and eventually in March 21 exited the business to them. Love it, Arjun. Uh, and, and congrats on all the success you've had and, and taking that plunge, right? And uh, so now, you know, you become, I would say, a brand when it comes to D2C or consumer internet. And uh, in fact, that's what I said, you know, at the beginning of the uh, uh, interview as well. So what made you join World Invest and, and what vision do you hold uh, for yourself at uh, World Invest in the coming years? So look, I think, Shiva, I exited Dr. Vedya's in March 21, right? And... When I exited the business, I knew that I wanted to do something to give back to founders, right? So I wanted to find a way to use my experiences over the last four, four and a half years in a structured way to help the next generation of entrepreneurs. And I'd set a target of 100 entrepreneurs 
um, that's what I wanted to meaningfully do. Uh, when when I exited, I, I said, look, let me give my time back to founders. So I spent a lot of time mentoring and advising founders. We wrote a playbook, um, Trisha and I, on our learnings, which we now teach as an eight-week cohort-based course on D2C. Our second cohort actually just launched through Growth School. Uh, and and then I said, okay, like I, I like some of these founders. Let me start investing in them. And so I started my angel investing journey sort of April 2021 and and backed more than 50 companies now um, in that journey. And then, look, I got connected to the folks at World Invest. Obviously, being a consumer entrepreneur, I know them really, really well. Um, they've backed some of the best brands in the world, right? From Oatly to Vitamin Water, from Vida Coco to Chewy and and been sort of consumer brands focused and brand builders. And in India, they have also backed some of the most iconic brands, right? From Sula, Viba, Epigamia, Purple, Wake Fit, Baiju's, Heads Up for Tales, and recently Lahori, a Punjab-based beverage brand. But Vol Invest is a sort of Series B type growth equity fund doing 10 to $100 million investments. And they came or, or they reached out to me with an idea to do more early stage investing. So they said, look, we want to back um, founders earlier on in their journey. And so we want to start a separate venture strategy run by ex-founders. It'll be a global strategy. So India, US and Europe. And each geography will be run by an ex-founder who's built and sold a consumer business below the age of 40. Um, and so it seems like your background is, is, is pretty um, relevant for the role. Um, and I just love the idea of bringing founders into the venture ecosystem and having a venture fund that's run by founders. Um, the idea resonated with me. I got to know them over the next eight weeks, found them to be some of the best, most supportive, empowering, yet uh, sort of very intelligent brand builders and brand thinkers. And yeah, so I took on the role um, in early September and I'm now building this strategy. Um, it's a consumer sector focused strategy where we'll invest across four pillars, consumer brands, consumer technology or consumer internet, enablement to e-commerce and e-commerce or new commerce platforms. That's the idea or thesis behind the behind the fund. And as I said, yeah, we just did our first, or announced our first investment in a company called Cuckoo FM in the vernacular podcasting space. And so um, expanding the horizons of World Invest, who's been typically a consumer brand investor to do more new age consumer technology businesses as well through the venture fund. Okay. And what's the best part about your job? I mean, it's, it's the, that's the easiest question, right? The best part about my job is on a daily basis, just meeting, interacting and engaging with amazing founders all the time. That's what keeps me engaged, excited, empowered. Um, and look, I think Shiva, you, you're, you're part of this ecosystem as well. I have never seen the Indian startup ecosystem filled with so much buzz, so much enthusiasm, so many amazing founders being able to get backers. It's just a really exciting time to be a part of this ecosystem. As someone who tried to raise money and build a business in 2017, 2018, um, I'm just so glad to see where we've reached. And what's the hardest part about the job? Look, I think the hardest part about the job is choosing there are so many amazing businesses, but there is limited capital available and there's limited time available, right? And so in that infrastructure or that ecosystem that we are in today, where there's so much good, so much good deal flow, so many amazing founders doing so many amazing things, choosing the three, five, 10, 15, 20 that you back out of the 100, 200, 500,000 that you see, that's, that's to me the most challenging thing. Yeah, totally. I can relate to that. And, uh, and, you know, there's a lot going on, meaning like, Arjun, when, when you're not able to focus or you're feeling overwhelmed, things are not going uh, in the direction that you want them to go towards. Are there any frameworks that you use uh, for you to be able to get back on track? Look, Shiva, I have a sty in my eye today and it's been bothering me for the last two, three days. I literally woke up this morning and I told my wife, I was like, when is this thing going away? Like, just when is this thing going away? But I would say if I, if I step back as in, in my role as a founder, right? Look, uh, you're going to face failure on a daily basis, maybe sometimes multiple times a day as well. And for me, just encountering that with grit and resilience, right? And fighting back every single time, that's the hallmark of a good entrepreneur. I can't say that I'm 
the best at it. I can't say I'm exceptional at it. I think there's a long way for me to go. But my dad used to say, you know, um, that one of his friends was a very successful entrepreneur. He used to treat it like a video game, right? And say, look, like sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down, but you got to keep playing the game. And so that was an interesting way to look at it, according to me. I love it. And uh, so, what are you most excited about, Arjun, outside of work? Uh, let's let's switch gears. I want to know you at a deeper level. So, look, Shiva, for me right now, um, outside of work, I'm a huge sports fan, right? And so, uh, IPL starting over the weekend and being in Bombay only. um allows me to go to at least 10 games this season so i'm really excited about that i think it's important to have things to do outside of work as well so like you i run a podcast on d2c called direct to a billion consumers i'm a huge sports fan i'm a runner um so yeah this tie is keeping me away from my my run today uh but yeah i, I think it's important to have outlets where you can step back um sort of let off some steam and and that allows you to get back and think better Got it. And and what do you do on the weekends? Oh, uh, look! I think uh, I spend time um, enjoying documentaries. I love watching documentaries. I'm excited to watch We Crashed, the WeWork story. One of my friends just told me it's uh, really amazing. Just finished watching Drive to Survive um, last season, um, which was a crazy season for F1. So I enjoy watching documentaries. I obviously give my fitness some more time, which I can't give it over the week. I try to record. some podcasts listen to some podcasts yeah that's 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 the weekend for me and catch up with friends i think now you're able to travel able to meet people in person so that's the weekends for me and if money and attention are not needed anymore what would you work on arjun i would actually work in the indian government in the tourism ministry i'm very passionate about that look i think we have so much in india from a history and culture perspective but if you go to europe or if you go to the us you will see the preservation of the historical sites monuments and artifacts is done in a much better way i think we have much more in terms of history than them but we don't preserve it in the right way or tell the right story so if 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 there was no consideration on any of these things i'd go and work in the tourism ministry and try to solve for this and by the way when i exited i thought about doing it i was like chal let me take a year off Let me go and work mm-hmm. in the tourism ministry pro bono and see if I can solve for this. Never ended up happening, but yeah, if I had, if I had um, all the time in the world, this is what I would spend my time on. I would would love to uh, see you at some point in the in the government. Uh, and in fact, uh, quite a few uh, entrepreneurs are thinking about you know, getting into politics uh, or somehow working with government. I think Ashneer or Bharat Pay talked about it. Uh, the founder of uh, 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 White Hat Junior is thinking about it. Yeah, I guess the next uh, transition uh, for tech entrepreneurs would be, you know, going and working for the uh, for for India for Indian government. And uh, Arjun, uh, we know you because of you know Dr. Vedya. Now you're an investor. What do your friends know you for? I hope they know me for a, a fun, enthusiastic, talkative guy. Um, <laughs> who's uh who's reliable and loyal that that's what i hope my friends know me for but i guess you'll have to ask them uh got it got it no love it uh arjun uh thanks for doing it man it was it was a lot of fun thank you thank you shiva for hosting me and i'm excited to see this go live and hear what people think